I still can't believe that I have been officially on YouTube for four years now. I have enjoyed every single video sharing here with all of you, my viewers, my subscribers. I could not have done any of this without all of you. So today I wanted to do my 10 absolute favorite projects I have ever done here on my channel all in one video. Now can you guess which 10 they're going to be? All right, let's get crafting. We're going to be using these two different garden basket holders where you can put plants inside of them and hang them up on your porches outside or even inside. And we are going to be cutting away this middle ring that's holding all of the wires into the center to be able to hold flowers. That's because we're going to be turning this into a really cute birdhouse cage. So once you go ahead and use your wire cutters and you snap away that wire circle in the middle, you're then going to straighten out your wires on your basket and make sure they are as straight as possible. Now here you see that it just snapped right where I'm putting my fingers. It is because that is the joint ring of this larger circle. Don't worry if that breaks, I'm going to show you how to fix it. No matter how many times I tried to straighten these up without breaking that part, it just naturally happened every single time. So I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a second. So once you've got your wires all cut off that circle, you're going to go ahead and straighten them out, like I said, as best you can. And then you're going to pull them back a little bit so that they're pulling away. They naturally want to curve in from them being molded that way at the store when they made it. Once you've got it all pulled out just like that, you then can take some twine and you, some hot glue and you could probably use some E6000 too, but that's going to take longer to dry. So I don't think that's necessary. I'm just taking a little dab of hot glue, holding it in place to make sure it dries. And then I'm going to take some twine and you're just going to wrap it around that to make sure it's all nice and stuck together. You could use electrical tape if you have some of that so that you don't have to worry about spray painting it, which is what I ended up doing. I wrapped this around it and then I spray painted it. And the thing is, is you can keep going all the way around and wrap this whole ring, but I decided just to do this one little spot and spray paint it. And once it's spray painted, you don't even notice it at all anymore that it snapped or had an issue at this joint. So once you've got it all wrapped around nice and tight, just make sure you have a nice finish and everything's laying flat. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pliers and you're going to create a little hook at the end of each one of these long wire pieces that we just straightened out the best we could. So here you are with your pliers and you're going to work your way all the way around the whole circle. You don't want to have a super huge hook and you want to make sure that the hooks are the same height all the way around because otherwise when you go to attach it to the part that you didn't cut, the one over there to my left, you're going to see that the birdcage could be crooked. So make sure all your hooks are the same height all the way around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just take that other part, the one that you didn't cut, the other basket, and you're going to hook them inside all the way at the same line of that same joint. You can see how my lines of the wires are matching up with each other. And then you're going to take your pliers again and you're going to bend them down and pinch them all into place. Now the cool thing about this project is that each one of these baskets is one dollar. It comes with this really cool chain that you can use for another DIY and repurpose it later. But it costs one dollar and to make one bird cage it's really only two dollars and maybe 50 cents because you're going to see some things i'm going to put towards the top to make it look like it's a bird cage with a little handle at the top but this is like the easiest project how pretty could these be at like a wedding reception how pretty could this be decorated for any season in your home and i'm really excited because i think i have some ideas for this for halloween to do some things with this craft and this idea once you have all the wires all tightened in place and you want to make them as tight as possible you're then going to take this flat part that comes from those caps from those glass jars you can get them from mason jars or the dollar tree caps that they have as well and then you're going to put that on the top and you're going to use a combination of e6000 that's going to seal it long term and then hot glue to hold it in place while the e6000 is drying i like to make sure that i went all around on every single one of those little bumps to really make sure that it was nice and sealed onto it 
so it really had a good bond and then I took a popsicle stick and I'm just applying it where I'm rubbing it up against that metal black rod that goes up into it and just rubbing it all over to make sure everything's nice and sealed and I try to do it as nice and clean as I possibly could. Then we're going to take one of these ping pong balls. I thought this was the funniest thing to put on here but you know what sometimes the most random things can turn out to be so beautiful and look like the real thing. So I just did a little snip. It's really easy to cut. Do a little circle. doesn't have to be perfect and you're doing this so that it'll lay flat on top of that can lid top. And you're gonna add some more of this E6000 all over the ping pong ball and you're just gonna nicely snug that right on there. And you can add a little hot glue once again to make sure it holds in place while it dries. Now here is the next thing. You could make this bird cage as tall as you want. You can do two tiers, three tiers, four tiers, however you want. And the more you play with it, it's just so cool to do different heights and stack them all up on a table. Our craft we're going to be doing is super easy and has hardly any supplies to it. We're going to be using these hanging racks from the Dollar Tree and these long painter sticks. And we're going to start by taking four of them and where their necks are beveled in, you can see here, I'm putting them together with some hot glue and then my staple gun. Now I know not everyone has a staple gun. I'm going to link it down below. If I can promise you this is something definitely worth investing in and it's not that expensive for a craft tool and you'll see me using it here all the time on my channel because painter sticks, you can do so many cool things with them and plus I also like to use them for like reupholstering things when I pick them up from the thrift stores. Anyway, I'll link it down below if you're interested. If not, let's just keep moving forward and you could always just do this all with hot glue and that will work as well. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take these hanging racks from the Dollar Tree and they bend pretty easily. So I'm going to bend out the top part where you would hang this over a cabinet door or even a house door and we're going to make them to be straight except for there's going to be four of them. The one at the very top because we don't want to see that long line, we're going to bend it over where we know that it's the same distance on both sides. Then I'm taking my miter box and my little hacksaw and I'm cutting off that curved neck. And this is again a tool I use here all the time on my channel. I find it so versatile. If you already have other cutting tools, you can do that too. But I just love this little toolbox. I use it all the time here in my craft room. So I'm then taking those four long painter sticks, four more of them, and I'm going to cut off the neck part, the handle or the neck, whichever you want to call it, and I'm going to place them on those sides. Now this is really cool because we are creating a support system for all of these hooks to be able to go up on. And the next step is going to be even easier. Just wait, here it comes. Now we're using zip ties. So we're going to take these hanging racks that you can get from the Dollar Tree and we're going to just zip tie them onto our frame and it is so secure that there are no issues with these sliding around or moving and you'll see at the end that I actually can display dishes on them. You can hang towels on them. It is such a great storage unit just because you can put so many things on it. You can hang mugs, whatever you would like. You can even hang jewelry on this and the total cost for me to make it was $8. 50 because I'm including in the spray paint that I used. I didn't use a whole can and you can spray paint it whatever color you want and you'll see at the end I spray painted mine black. So what I'm doing is I'm adding three zip ties on each the sides and the middle to make sure it's nice and secure and it doesn't move and then I'm doing it up towards the top because you can see here that I didn't bend down the sides on these hanging racks. You can see that they're straight up. And once you spray paint it, everything all just looks so polished and finished when you're done. So here I am, I'm adding on my last two hanging hooks and I'm making sure that everything is nice and secure and on there really tight. And when it's done, you just take a couple screws and hang this up somewhere in your home.
for this DIY, I am going to be using a plunger, these two cute crates that they have in the craft section at the Dollar Tree, and then some leftover long painter sticks that I've cut down to size that are left over from a previous project. We're going to take some wood glue and some hot glue and put it all over one of the sides of these crates and then we're going to just bring them together because we're going to be creating a super cute tray that is so farmhouse inspired and it's super easy because they already have these crates at the Dollar Tree and they have so many of them. They have different things on the sides as cut out. Now I'm going to go with these long painter sticks to create the handle right at the star point. I'm just going to center it right in the middle of the box, adding some hot glue and some wood glue again, like I like that long term, short term hold so it really is built well. And then we're going to just put that right on the center, just like I did the other one. And then we can go ahead and create the crossbar up at the top. That's where our plunger comes in handy. We're gonna cut off the screwed end that's engraved into the wood, and then we're gonna cut off the other side so we get the right sizing, and then use some sandpaper to sand it down. Now I'm using my drill to pre-drill a hole so that it doesn't splinter the wood on my handles for my painter sticks, because that can happen. Screwing in the screws, and then I'm gonna use my staple gun to go in and just make sure I secure the bottom just a little bit better because I like things to have a nice strong hold. Our next step is now to take some water, some brown paint and some black paint and mix it together to create a wood stain. Now I know we could use regular wood stain for this but I just like using this so much more because I can wash it off my hands really easy and I don't even have to wear gloves. Now you can stop at this point or you can distress it and take a little further like you know I like to do it here on my channel. So once it was all dried and nice and dark, I went in with a little bit of white paint and simply distressed the sides. The next DIY is probably the one that I am most excited about sharing. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these cooling racks and we're going to need seven of them to create the frame, but you can make this as big as you want. You can add more cooling racks. And again, these are just a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And when you zip tie them together, it is so sturdy and strong. So you can see here that I have the base where the cooling rack little legs are facing down on the ground. So you've got that little support there. I put the two sides and then on the back, I'm putting two of the cooling racks and you can see there that they're overlapped just a little bit so that it creates this perfect box. Then I'm gonna put a zip tie top on and then cut off any of those extra zip ties that we just don't need that are all over the place. And then I'm going to put in that middle shelf right at the halfway point. You're going to zip tie in another shelf and make sure you're generous. Do zip ties on the two sides. And I used five zip ties on each one of those. So you can see the front and the back on the right side, the front and the back on the left side, and then the one at the very back. So it holds everything all together really strong and sturdy. So once you've got everything all cut off, I took mine outside and I gave it a coat of spray paint because I wanted mine to be black. And then I took an extra one and I traced it onto a foam core board. You're going to need three of these pieces. And then I'm going to take this really pretty contact paper that they have at the Dollar Tree. I love the print of this. I try to use this a lot actually here on my channel whenever I'm going for something more pretty. And I'm just going to wrap the foam core board piece in it like you'd wrap a present. So I'm just making sure everything's nice and tight and smoothed out and I'm going to cut off any extra that I don't need so it folds nicely on the sides, tuck in those little flaps, add a little bit of hot glue and then pull it over nice and tight so it's all on there really well and it looks really pretty. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I'm going to draw little holes that I know I'm going to punch out. I'm using my crocodile again. You could use a traditional hole puncher for this or even a craft knife, but I have my crocodile, so I'm doing that. And then I'm going to zip tie that onto my frame. So you can see here that I've spray painted it black. And I just think at this point, it really makes it go from just being Dollar Tree supplies to being high end, especially with putting this little shelf on here. I just love the way this looks. So here I am, I'm cutting off those black zip ties and I'm going to make this have the three shelves. So I've got the bottom, 
the middle, and then the very top I'm also going to put it. And once you see it all together, oh, it just looks so pretty. You would never know that this came from the Dollar Tree. And at this point, I have only spent $8.50 on it. These storage units are super, super expensive, and they basically come from very little supplies to make so if i could recommend this this could be so cool for a bedroom or a college dorm student or just extra storage in like your laundry room there's just so many cool things you can do with it now is where we're going to make it even prettier we're going to take these buckets from the dollar tree storage section that they have there at their store and i am just going to take these really cute garden tags and i'm going to pop off those back sticks and add on some e6000 and some hot glue making sure that it has that long-term short-term seal on it and i just think that this looks so stinking cute adding this little tag to the front of it and then i'm going to come around on the sides of my container and i'm going to punch several holes actually I needed a bigger hole than what my crocodile's size is but you punch just a couple times and you'll get the big enough hole size that you need to run your rope through so this is why I love this tool I can go through plastic and metal and you can see here that it's cutting it like it's not even struggling at all then I'm gonna take my rope and I'm gonna cut it down to size and I'm gonna thread it through that hole and hot glue everything down. And when it's all done and you put them on the shelves, it is the prettiest storage unit. Total cost for me to make everything was, uh, I think, $12.50. I'm gonna just say a total of $13 to make this whole thing. And what a beautiful, beautiful project. For this project, you're gonna need nine of these boxes. I picked these all up from the Dollar Tree around Christmas time, but they definitely have them all year round. Then with a ruler, I'm gonna be creating two angled lines and then a little bit of a lip on the box. This is going to be done on three of the boxes. Now you can see here I'm using my big scissors as I'm coming in along the side, but as I got to that corner, I realized a little pair of scissors were much better for that so it didn't cause any of the box to rip. So just take your time when you're cutting around those corners and making sure that you're not forcing that cardboard because it will rip if you're not careful. So once I came up the side and I had that part all cut, I repeated that two more times for my other boxes. Then I took some hot glue and some E6000 because I really wanted it to hold well together because I want to keep this forever. I love this thing. I'm now going to just glue those together so it's a nice strong hold and then I'm going to use some of these clips from the Dollar Tree. These are just the cutest and I find that they're so helpful in my craft room. Now I've got three at the top and I'm going to continue down with three more just regular boxes not cut and then I'm going to go down to the bottom and then do another row of three. Once I had everything all glued nice and tight and firmly in place, I took it outside and gave it a nice coat of gray spray paint. Now we're gonna be creating a galvanized look. It's really simple to do. You're just dabbling on paint on top of the gray spray paint that you originally had. I went from a dark to a medium to a light gray and then very tiny bits here and there of white. We want the white to be that part where it just kind of shines when you look at that galvanized metal. And then I just use a paper towel and I just keep dabbing it around until I get the look that I like. But you want all of those colors to come through. Now I'm taking some long painter sticks and I'm cutting them down to the size that I need of the length of my container that I'm making here. And this inspiration came from one of my favorite online stores. I will link it down below. They most likely have sold out in this particular item, but I love these things. I feel like you can put so many fun things inside of them, and it's just so fun to be able to decorate on a shelf for a holiday. I just, I think they're so cute. And the inspiration that it came from, it was so expensive. This, I'm seriously making it for maybe about $10, $11 versus the price that it is listed down below in my description box. Now I'm just simply adding some tags, screwing it in with an eyeglass screwer, 
and it's ready to be decorated. These are the supplies we're going to be using for this DIY today. Two of the signs from the Dollar Tree, some chalk paint that I got from Joann's with a coupon, and then three of the packs of long painter sticks from Home Depot. There are three in a pack. We're going to need nine of them, so that'll be $3 for those painter sticks. Now we're going to remove the tags, push the boards up to each other, just as you see me doing here, and we are gonna measure out our painter sticks where we need to cut on those lines. We're gonna have two shorter ones that are gonna be going vertical, and then we're gonna have two longer ones that are going the length of the board that are gonna be going horizontal. So we need two and two of these to be able to create a frame around these two signs. I love these kind of projects because you can take a whole lot of nothing and turn it into something really special. We're going to be making a command center where we have a chalkboard, a place to hang up our keys, and a place our mail. So you can see here that I used my hacksaw and my miter box. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just start gluing them on. And you can see that I glued down the top piece first, and then I'm doing the sides. Because if you see right there where those spots are ripped up, I tried to do the top and the bottom first, not realizing that it would be better to do the sides and then the sides weren't fitting in right so make sure you do the top the sides and then the bottom that way so everything fits perfectly around it and you're not trying to shove pieces of wood into their spots it just makes it so much easier this way so go ahead and just place all of your sticks down with some hot glue and then we're going to take another long painter stick and you can see that I pushed it down into the actual spacing of the wood because this is going to create the mailbox. So I have one that's going the width and then we're going to have two that are shorter. They're going to go the height of it. And then this is going to allow us to be able to create that box for mail to go in. So you can see I added some glue. I'm placing it in place and then I'm adding on the sides. Now, here is something I learned as I was doing this. A little bit later, you're gonna see me paint it. Once you get the box framed out, I highly recommend painting the white part of the inside of the box first before you put on the front of the box. That is the one thing that I wish that I had done and I ended up having to struggle by putting my paintbrush down in there to get everything white. So at this point you should paint everything white and then come back in and paint once you put the crossbars on the front of it. But you can see here I'm using my staple gun. I'll link this down below too. I love using a staple gun on all my crafts. And then on the back side, you're gonna see that I'm just kind of getting a measurement of where those pieces are gonna be. And I'm just going to take my staple gun and go ahead and staple on those markers just so that I don't go through on the other side because we wanna make sure we're securing that front box where we're gonna put our mail. This is really easy. I just used a pencil, just kind of marked it, brought it around on the other side. You could use a ruler if you want to, but I didn't want to pull one out, and so I was kind of being lazy. So basically just mark the spots that you think are gonna hit right at that front part where the little box for the mail is, and then just staple it on and just keep checking to make sure you didn't go through. Okay, now at this point, like I said, you should paint at this point, but I ended up putting on the front bars first and like I said that was a little bit of a regret because you'll see in a minute that I'm going to struggle painting the inside. Once you've got those on you can go ahead and staple them down and secure them into place. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the painting and you're going to see here where I'm having to like I said shove my brush down in there to get that area painted. So learn from my mistake on this part but Painting is really fun. I always find this part super therapeutic. I love painting things. I don't know what it is about painting, but it just, I, I just love painting. 
So here I am, I'm taking some white paint and I'm just gonna go over all the wood. You could stain this if you wanted to, that could be really beautiful too. You don't have to just use white, you could use a color, you could stain it. But once you've got that part all done, you're gonna go ahead and take your chalk paint and you're going to go right at that seam line between those two boards and you're just gonna paint a nice thick layer of chalk paint on so that you can use chalk on this. Now we're gonna take these hooks. I picked these up from the Home Depot. They were quite a few of them in a pack and I think, I think they were like $4, I could be wrong, but it's something right around that price. And then I just marked out where I wanted my hooks to be and I'm using my drill to pre-drill the holes. It makes it much easier putting in these little hooks. And then you're just gonna screw them right in. You could add a little wood glue if you wanna keep them in there permanently. That's a great option too but you're gonna go ahead and just screw them all in so they're nice and tight. And if you start having a problem screwing them in, you can always use some pliers. And then I took one of these garden tags. I'm gonna scrape off some of the paint so that the bond is really, really nicely put onto the front of this sign. And we're gonna just glue it right on. I'm gonna show you some hot glue for that. And then I thought it would be really cute if I were to write on there with some paint or I guess paint on it, the word male. I just loved the way that that looked. I thought this was so cute. I can't believe how much Pottery Barn sells these things for. You can seriously make them for pennies. At this point, I have spent probably about $6. Now at this point, I'm just adding in hooks at the top. I took those original golden hooks and I closed the opening so it's a rounded closed piece and I'm screwing them right in so you can hang it up at your back door and put all of your things in it. For this project, we are gonna be making a lantern and we're gonna take these long paint sticks. These painter stirrer sticks, I hear people call them all kinds of different things, but they come from the home improvement stores locally to you. And we are gonna take the long ones and cut down eight of them. These are gonna become the side structures for our lantern that we're making. And then once you've got eight of those all cut down to the size that you need, and they need to all be the same size, you're then going to go ahead and take some wood stakes that you would use in your garden. I see a lot of people use these around their gardens, but these are wood stakes that you can also pick up from your home improvement store. And I'm gonna be using a combination of wood glue and hot glue for that long-term, short-term hold to make sure that it nice and strong bonds together. We are gonna have six of those. This is going to be the base of our lantern. I'm gonna leave all the measurements down below so that it's not making this video too complicated. So if you're needing the measurements, go ahead down to the description box and you'll see them down there. But I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of those six pieces together to create a very pretty, nice, solid base. Now you could do these with the painter sticks, I decided to use these wood stakes instead because I just liked how they were more substantial, thicker, sturdier looking. I just liked how they looked. But again, you can use painter sticks if you would like. So once you got all of those all wiped and cleaned up, because you could see there that I was pulling off some of that extra glue that kind of squirted out, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing on the sides. So again, I'm using the wood glue with the hot glue, long-term, short-term hold. And then to make it really strong and sturdy, we are gonna take our staple gun and we are just going to staple in a, two staples on it to make sure that it's nice and strong. And by the time we're done with this thing, it is gonna be so sturdy and it is just gonna be so pretty on your front porch or wherever you decide to use it in your home. So now I'm putting on the other side and I'm just making sure that the sides match up and then I'm gonna move on to the next and I'm just gonna keep putting the two corners on, making sure that the sides match up with each other so that it is nice and smooth on the sides. And then you can see even as I'm going up, I'm putting little dots of that wood glue and hot glue to make sure that the top and the bottom and the sides are all glued together and then adding two staples at the bottom. So as I get around the corner to my fourth leg, I noticed something started to happen with this and I thought I would just mention it all so you would know. 
and I noticed that towards the top you could see that they're starting to bow in towards the top so when you go to glue on these support pieces which I'm doing right here I cut down eight of these smaller painter sticks because I wanted to wrap them around the bottom and the top to create a nice pretty finished look and a structure to it I cut eight of these but you can see here that it's a little bit not all the way up to the edge because I want again I'm going to show you in a second add another piece to it but up here at the top when I went to go put up this piece you can see that it's not fully lining up so I had to actually pull it out from each other and make sure that it was not crooked and that just happens with wood sometimes it'll just shift on you so you're going to see here that as I staple it, I'm gonna pull it out. You can see what I'm talking about. It wants to kind of collapse in a little bit. So just make sure you pull it out, glue it into place, that hot glue, so it'll hold it into place while the, the wood glue dries, and then just staple it. And then I just flipped it over and did it on the other side, making sure everything was nice and straight and all glued and stapled together. Now, now, like I said earlier, you saw that I had a little bit of a spacing between those top parts, and I'm gonna show you in a second. I'm gonna fill them in with some really pretty smaller square pieces of wood that I just happen to have in my craft room. You don't have to do this. You could make those painter sticks that are coming around the bottom and the top the exact length, but I wanted to have a little bit more detail, so I'll show you that in a second. But right now at the top, we're gonna take some more of those wood stakes and I'm going to use my miter box. Now there's a straight cut and then there's a 45 degree angle cut and you can see that I'm just going to cut at an angle and I'm going to allow this to create a miter edge at the top and then see here all the four pieces all cut with that little side angle. Now they are all going to miter together beautifully and look super high end. So here I am, I'm adding some more of that wood glue, hot glue, and I'm just gonna go around making sure every single side is pressed together really well so there's not a big gap. And then if you have any glue squirt out from pushing it together, just again, wipe that away so it has a nice clean finish. And then once you get around to that last side, I'm gonna set this over to the side just for a minute while I go back over to my actual lantern and add on this piece right here. So here is the piece I was talking about. I had this in my craft and I thought this would be really pretty. So on those eight pieces that I cut down to size to wrap around the bottom and the top, four of them I cut a little bit shorter and the other four I cut a little bit longer so that I can put this piece on there. I thought this would look so pretty to add on this little detail where you have this little corner that's kind of popped up and it's just gonna fit in there nicely. I'm adding in some more hot glue and some wood glue once again because I just wanna make sure that this is built really well. And I mean, this cost nothing. At this point, these are just seriously painter sticks, stir sticks, and these wood stakes. And look at how we can build the most cool things from it. Now, I could leave it like this, or we could make it a little more special. You know how I like to do it here on my channel. I like to take it a little further and just challenge myself a little bit more each time. So I'm gonna take these long sticks. They're not shish kebab sticks. They're, I always forget what these ones are called. Leave a comment down below. I think steaks? No, nope, that's not it either. Either way, these long shish kebab sticks, we're just gonna go with that name, but they're the really long, Sticks, and I'm just gonna cut them down to size because I want to create a really pretty crisscross design work on the inside of this lantern and just add a little more something special to it. I thought that this would be really pretty. So you're gonna need two for each opening on your lantern. And you can see here that I'm simply just measuring it on the inside of the box first for my first cut. And now I'm just going back and cutting everything down to size so that it all fits perfectly inside of those spots. Once I had enough of them all cut, I'm gonna add in some hot glue into the corners and then I'm going to put them at an angle. I'm gonna go one way, make sure you hold it into place so it's nice and set. Add a little more glue on top of it so it's nice and glued in place so it doesn't move around on you or lift up. And then you're gonna go the other direction, the other corners, and you're gonna add some more hot glue and then just press them down. Now these are gonna to wanna to not lay flat that second one. 
So you're gonna have to hold it down for a little bit while the glue dries. But again, this was super simple to do. So once I went all the way around with all four of those, I added some glue to the top and then I put on my miter top that we made earlier. And at this point, it just looks so pretty. I was so excited for this project. And as my family was coming down to check on me to see how I was doing with this project, they all started saying, oh, it's a lantern, <laughs> which I had this thing for lanterns. They weren't sure at first what it was. My husband thought at first it was a trophy box, which I laughed because you never know with me. <laughs> so once I gave it a nice coat of paint, I'm gonna take some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna braid it. I thought it would be really pretty to have a nice, thick, substantial rope on this. I braided it, brought the ends together and just hot glued them so that they were nice and secured. And then I actually used one rope bundle from the Dollar Tree. I had took three long pieces that were equal length and then this was the little piece that was left over. I just unwrapped it and I'm gonna use that to bring it all together at the end, those little scraps that you saw me there pulling apart from the rope. So I wrapped it around the top of my lantern. I added in some hot glue to make sure it stays there forever. I don't want it to come off. And then I'm gonna add some more hot glue right here and that scrap piece of rope that was left over after I braided these. I'm gonna just wrap that around a few times to make a very pretty finished look up at the top. I loved how this turned out so, so much. And then you don't have to do this part, you can skip it, but y'all know me, I just love a little roughed up edges. For this DIY, we're gonna be using some of these wood square planks, painter sticks, and then seven of these long signs that you can get all year round at the Dollar Tree. They always use this sign for each holiday and season. So I'm gonna start by just popping off that front 3D popped out holiday tag, and then the ribbon and the staples off the back. Then I'm gonna take three of them, bring them together where they're all lined up perfectly, and then glue down some long painter sticks and this is going to allow the box to become stronger and stronger. So I'm also going to be cutting down a few pieces so that I can put them on the sides of the box and I'll show that in just a second but you can see here that once I've got things glued down I'm stapling everything together. So we've got those joints in the middle and then on the very ends and that's where the side of the box are going to start coming together and the ones that I cut down, you can see here, I put them towards the top of two of the long ones, of two of these long signs, and those are gonna go on opposite sides. And then right now, I have those last two signs. I'm gonna be measuring how long I want it to be to be able to customize the top and the bottom of our apothecary drawer DIY. So. I'm just scoring along this line once I had exactly where I wanted to cut. And then these snap really easy once you score it a couple of times on each side. And I'm just going back and forth to make sure I have a nice clean break. Then I'm gonna start gluing on all of the sides. I make sure that when I put on the glue it's a nice thick amount. And then I'm lining everything up because you really do get one shot at this. So I'm making sure I'm lining everything up and pressing also in the middle to make sure if there's no bowing in the sign. Then I'm gonna bring on the top and the bottom and you can see where I cut down those wood sticks earlier so that way I have a joint to be able to bring up the sides of the box. At this point the box has been completely built. It's really strong using all the reinforcement painter sticks and now I'm gluing on all of my wood plank squares. I wanted to dress up this box a little bit to give it some decorative mold trimming and so I'm using some of these long wood dowel sticks from the Dollar Tree as well, cutting them down to size where I need them to be with some wire cutters and then up at the top I took a long popsicle stick. It wasn't long enough to reach all the way across so I ended up having two pieces and I just brought them together. Now originally I did put some staples on the front of it and realized it was so strong at this point that I actually could take them back off, so I did. Gave it a nice coat of white paint, and now I'm coming in and distressing the box. 
This part really is up to you and how much you want to distress it or if you want to do a different color, but I decided to go a little bit heavier around the box squares to make it look like they're old, beat up looking drawers because I really love how vintagey this is starting to look. And now I'm coming back in with some of these metal tags and then I'm using a small eyeglass screw to be able to put in these screws. Just because they're so tiny, I thought that this would be the best option. But I made sure I drilled my holes first so that way I didn't struggle with trying to get through that wood. Then I'm adding on some handles and some knobs. I ended up doing little handles and knobs because I didn't want to use all of my knobs. These were actually a little more expensive than what I wanted to commit to put all on one project. So I kind of mixed them up and I went back and forth between these little handles and knobs. I will link everything I used for this hardware down below in my description box. And then at the very end, I just came up at the top and I painted on something cute which says Vintage Market Company. I'm always amazed how when you take a bunch of random things and bring them together, it can make some really cool stuff. Now everything came from the Dollar Tree except for the long painter sticks. You can pick those up at any home improvement store. I picked mine up from Home Depot and they were a dollar, I think they might have been a dollar twenty-five and there's three in a pack and they're really long. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything off that's 3D dimensional on these signs and we are going to just get down to the main baseboard. So go ahead and cut everything off and then you can see here that I've got a piece of foam core board and that's because we're going to use it as a base to glue everything down and I cut it down to size to where there is a nice lip around the boards and I'm going to have these painter sticks and you can see here that I'm marking it because I want to miter the corners with my miter box. I'm going to link that box down below and my little hand saw. I get asked about it all the time and I have lots of videos here on my channel where I show more in depth on how I use it. It is a tool I recommend using all the time in your craft room because look at how cool it is to be able to take that little saw, cut it without having to do something super scary and intimidating with big electric saws and you still get that fun, really cool framed look. So here I am, I'm just making sure that I glue down all of my painter sticks first and then I'm going to glue down those middle long signs that we are using and I'm doing that because if you try to glue down the signs first you might have a little bit of overhang or things just don't go on right so it's better to do the frame first and then do the signs add lots of hot glue to make sure everything is nice and sealed and in place now you're going to take some spackles some of this putty that you would use to fill in nail holes whenever you're taking down pictures when you're moving or just moving around pictures in general in your home artwork i'm going to take that and fill in all of those cracks and seams just so that it makes it look really finished and polished when we start to paint it so once you've got everything on there and it's dried you can go ahead and take some sandpaper and just rough off any of the stuff that is popping up or too texture that you don't want it to be there and tap it off to dust now we're going to take some white paint that I stained the wood with some water and paint, got it to the color that I liked, and now I'm hand sketching on my letters. I'm using my ruler to make sure everything is nice and level and spaced apart the way I want it to be. And now I'm going to go in with my black paint and a fine tip brush and just take your time. I really love hand painting letters. I talk about that a lot here on my channel too. You all, if you are returning, you know that I love hand painting letters. I just think that they're so fun. I do have a Cricut and I do love my Cricut and I will eventually show you all some DIYs soon with that Cricut so those that do have them can use those ideas but I always want to encourage everybody to practice their hand painting and their lettering because it really is super therapeutic and just fun to practice handwriting. So once you've got everything painted on and you've taken your time to cover all of your pencil sketches that you've done and you let that dry, you're ready to move on to putting on your little baskets. Now again, these baskets are from the Dollar Tree. They have them over in all their bin sections 
and I'm just going to do some pencil markings where I know I need to drill some holes so that I can wire on these baskets so that they don't fall off and they're nice and secure on our board. I want to be able to actually put fruit and things that kind of are heavier in weight. So we really want to make sure we're putting this on so that it's actually usable and not just decor. Now we're going to take our wire and we're going to slip it through the back and we're going to be using two wires for each basket. And then once you've got those wires on, you're going to make sure that you thread that right on to your basket and you're going to twist, twist, twist and make sure you've got it on there nice and snug. And then because you don't want anything to be poking, you're going to go ahead and take your pliers and you're going to twist and coil down all of your wires that are popping out. And then to make sure that it's really, really, really safe and secure, I like to tap it down really well and then add hot glue. Now this I thought was really fun. They have these in their garden section right now. These darling little tags or wood tags. I'm adding some hot glue and then coming around on the backside and to make sure it doesn't fall off, I'm gluing the backside too so it's all meshed around that wire basket. And to complete the look, take some sandpaper and sand it down. We're going to take this garden divider. I don't know what this thing is called, but this thing from the garden and these long painter sticks. And we are going to turn them into a really cute artwork that you can hang up on your wall. So what we're going to do first is we are going to take these long painter sticks and we are going to cut them down to size. So once I've got all of mine cut on both ends, I'm going to go ahead and take those mitered edges and put them together with some wood glue and some hot glue. So I've got that long term, short term seal where they're going to really hold together as a nice frame. I really like making high end Dollar Tree DIYs here on my channel and I like to try to challenge you all to push yourself to new creativities and just have fun making things that are outside of your comfort level and learn and grow with each new project you make. So once you've got that glue all in place, you're going to add a little bit more and then you're going to take these little pieces of the triangles. These will come off as you're cutting your wood pieces and you're just going to put those on to help support those corners because you don't want them to break. We want to make this nice and sturdy, like I said, so it's high end. And then you're going to just staple it into place on all four of those corners and you have created yourself your very own frame. Now we're going to move ahead and start cutting this thing apart. You can see here that I cut off this rounded part and I'm snipping away any little extra edges that I don't want so it's as smooth as I possibly can get it. And we're going to do that four times and those are going to go in each corner of this frame. So make sure you just take your time cutting them. They actually cut pretty easy but you can accidentally cut too far if you go too fast. So just go really slow as you can see here. I'm just taking my time. I did speed it up for interest of time in this video not being too long. But just again, take your time and just, you know, cut around those edges and make sure you're being thoughtful on that curve because that's probably the trickiest part you're going to cut. So you're going to actually need two of these items from the Dollar Tree, these garden flower bed dividers and we are going to be cutting them all up. So now that we've got those four rounded pieces, now we're going to go towards the bottom of these garden dividers and we are going to cut off and you can see here you want it to almost look like a T. This is the bottom part of this item that we're cutting up and that's because we're going to use that to shove underneath the frame. That's going to become the thing that is going to really support this whole thing and keep all these pieces together without it falling apart and you know over time breaking. So you can see here that on the back side I flipped it over. I put down some hot glue first and now I'm going to staple it onto the frame so it's really strong and sturdy. That way so there's some of this cool lattice work 
onto the frame and then other pieces are glued and it's all nice and secure. So once I've got those all four secure onto the frame, I'm gonna go ahead and start hot gluing on these rounder pieces, these curve with the little curly piece and this little arrow. We're gonna put those right in the corner and support them with some glue. And then on the back side, the front side, you saw me put down the hot glue, and then on the back side, I'm gonna add in some E6000 just to really make sure it's hot glued and long-term glued together. Now we're gonna take the second one that we have of these garden flower bed dividers, and then we're gonna take this next piece. You saw how I cut out that little part that's an arrow, and also these rounded pieces because we're gonna take them and create a circle. So you can see here, we need these two pieces that we just cut out. And the circle's really easy to put together. You're just gonna take three of these curved edges and you're going to bring them all together with some hot glue and then just push them all into place and they will make a perfect circle. Now, these other pieces like I just showed you that I cut out. So you can see here that I'm going to be pointing the arrow in now and this is the same thing that we cut on that first cut that was rounded that we're putting in the corners. We're just taking off that rounded top. And then we're gonna just nestle that in. See how I flipped it over? And I'm putting them underneath that piece that's in the corner. You wanna make sure everything is nice and glued down really well. And then these extra pieces from that T that we cut earlier with the little curl on it, we don't want those long pieces. I've decided to just go ahead and cut those away. You can see here that that slipped and moved a little bit. I need to hold it down a little bit longer with some hot glue. And while that's drying, I went ahead and just cut off the last of those long pieces. We don't want those to be there. And then once we've got everything cut and everything's all hot glued and held into place and nice and sturdy, go ahead and flip it over. And now we're gonna take the circle and we are gonna put hot glue on that and add that into the center of this really cool art frame. So the cool thing about this is that it actually is really strong and sturdy because I've reinforced it with E6000 and hot glue. And I do recommend flipping it over one more time to the back side and adding in more hot glue where you think you need it. It's gonna be really sturdy the more hot glue you add to the back. And then when you're done, just pull off all the little strings because you're gonna have hot glue strings everywhere when you're putting this thing together. I did, so just take the time to take those all off. Now you're gonna go ahead and take some white paint and paint the frame. I will say, I wish that I had done this before I started putting on all this black lattice iron work, but you know, <laughs> sometimes when I'm filming, I don't think about things as I'm, I'm going and I'm just making sure you all can see what I'm doing. So here is the finished look. Now I'm curious to hear from all of you out of all of my projects you've ever seen here on my channel. Did your favorite project make my top 10 favorite list? Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think, which one you've actually tried. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. It really does help out my channel and it means so much to me. And don't forget to check out these video recommendations for some more videos just like this one. All right, until the next episode, bye friends.